Inside Science. If you look at your thumb and you nail, the length of the vocal cord is typically the length of the uh, nail on your thumb. Uh, and it's kind of like a cone, an uh, ice cream cone, narrow at the beginning, wider at the end. These two structures can produce essentially unlimited number of, of, of vibrations and pitches. In a very developed voice, up to six octaves or more. So if you look at this from a mathematical point of view, so the vocal cord, let's say, is in the male, let's say, 16 millimeter long, the vibratory portion. The widest portion at the end is, let's say, five millimeters or four millimeters. If you make a hundred hertz tone, okay, for one second, okay, that transition to 100 repetitions. So, so let's say you have four millimeters by 100 repetition, that's 400 millimeters motion. In the operatic performance, the singer's vocal cords move or run, basically, while well, they stand in one place, but the vibration can be translated into motion. Can you guess how many meters or yards or miles? Uh, uh, 10,000 miles. So, depending on stage time, so let's say a singer sings and in the tessitura has a range from A uh, to A4, okay? So let's say you have four octaves, or three octaves. So the vibration from, let's make it simple, 500 hertz, and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. So for one second of 500 hertz, it's 500 times four millimeters, that's 2,000 millimeters, that's 20 centimeters. And if you go over so many minutes, uh, that becomes 10 kilometers, 11 kilometers, 10 miles. Just by singing, the motion, and it's interesting. If you know how to do it, you get off, you go home, and you're not fatigued. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.